Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me here. Um, to say our thoughts and prayers are with you is not enough. That's why I wanted to do this show. Because what we can do is have this real conversation about your son and who he was. I know he was studying to be a doctor, a speech pathologist. And your heart, he was your world. Jelani is one of the best things that God blessed me with. God blessed me with and entrusted me with five humans that he gave me. A chance to birth into this world. Jelani was the life of his siblings and me. Jelani was smart. He's driven. He's outspoken. Jelani, Jelani is everything to me. I'm curious, the news outlets in your area, did you call any of the stations? And you don't have to name the names, but just take me through the process when you felt nobody is listening to me here. Tamara, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know to call news outlets or newspapers or anything. Um, I have a friend that works for Public Broadcasting Network. She said, Carmen, I'm gonna sit you down in front of my camera so that you can talk about Jelani and get him to get, to let everybody know he's missing. That's what I did. News outlets wasn't calling me and saying, hey, can we talk about your son? Can we put this out here? I wasn't getting that. When you saw the news coverage start to heavily focus on Gabby's case, and, and I wanna be clear here, I think, and I've said this before, you have Gabby Petito's family who are asking for coverage like anyone else, and you have you, asking for coverage like anyone else. This is not black, white, Asian, Latino. This is parent. This is love. And the collateral damage if the news media doesn't get this right is more hurt with families who need our help. It's our responsibility to help people. So there you are and you're watching the news coverage shift to Gabby. What did you feel or what did you see happening there from your perspective? From my perspective, um, that day I had heard about Gabby, but that afternoon I kept hearing about Gabby and I got mad. I was angry because I'm over here and I'm calling the detective and I'm having to sit down and make my own video. And so, but I see Gabby everywhere. I seen her on the news. I seen her on social media. I seen her everywhere. And nobody was talking about Jelani, and Jelani was missing. At one point when the local news did a story on Jelani, it was Gabby's picture mm -hmm. that was shown? They were talking about Jelani, and they put up a picture of Gabby up there, and the lady kept doing this. But that even further more just showed me that... Uh, they talk about Jelani, but their focus is still on this young white girl, this young black boy that's missing. We'll, we'll, we'll put it out there because his mom is now saying that she needs help, but our focus is here. And I'll say, you know, listen, that we reached out to that news outlet and they said it was a mistake. And I've been in newsrooms. I've never heard someone say, we will only do this story because we care more about this missing white person. I do believe that people believe that this is what the audience cares about versus caring about a young black or brown child missing. So you have social media on your side and now Lizzo and other well-known people are sharing Jelani's story. And you are now on the cable news outlets and you're now being heard. But to me, that wouldn't be vindication. And I know it wasn't for you. It wasn't. Because, because he was still missing. He was still missing, and they were still not doing anything. They were not looking for him. The detective from Bloomington called me that first week. Jelani was reported missing on that Wednesday. That Friday, he said to me on the phone, Carmen, it was 4.30, I'm getting off of work. And if I don't get anything over the weekend, I won't be back in 
I'll contact you on Monday. I'm supposed to stop? Because you got to go home? Who else is working? Why do I have to do this by myself? So I sat there and I listened to him. And I instantly, I can't sit here and wait till Monday to hear from you. I had to do what I, the first thing I knew how to do was, like, I got to form my own search. So that's what I did. I put out a, a post on social media and said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I need y'all to help me. Me and my kids and my family, we're going to Peru, and this is what we're going to do. And I need whoever can to join us because I got to find Jelani. And I knew Jelani would want me to look for him. He knew I would be looking for him. When someone is missing, there's this critical window mm -hmm. where someone may have seen the car or someone may have seen him walking. And the more media attention that's given to that, particularly local, helps piece together where that person might be. So you were against time as any family member with a missing loved one. Mm -hmm. You hired a private investigator? I did. Um, we haven't found out a lot of information either. Um, so I'm looking at bringing in another investigator because I need people with resources um, that can assist us. Um, I need people that can look at this case and follow up on leads and not think just because someone gives you something oh, they're just concerned and we're not going to investigate them anymore because somebody knows something. Did you feel um, that the national news outlet started to invite you on out of a sense of guilt? Yes, I do. I feel like once I started making noise about Gabby Petito, and again, my heart goes out to her mother because, like I said, I knew what it was like to sit in her mm -hmm. seat. But Jelani needed that attention, too. And he wasn't getting any of it. And I know that Gabby Petito's family, they've given interviews saying they want other children and other cases covered as well. And that's my point. If this keeps happening, now, they've, they stop their focus on their child to say, this isn't right. You're here saying this isn't right. And then you're turning on TV, and it's still continuing. And it's not stopping. Of course, the newscast is 30 minutes. The entire newscast can't be missing loved ones. That's not, that's not how it works. Right. But when you see it disproportionately be a certain type of loved one, that's when it hurts. And it hurt. It, it actually, seeing that was like, it was, it was pain. It was already Jelani's missing and I can't find him and I need help to find him. But not even getting that assistance and that help and using that resource of the media to help me put the word out that I was, I was looking for him was even worse. We have this incredibly diverse audience of people who watch this show. And I've been around and I've done deadline crime. I do think most people care about people, certainly parents. You see a mom saying, help me find my child. Very few people, I believe, wouldn't help. And that's what you were forced to do as strangers. And strangers, Tamron, have been there. Yeah. They have been there. People I don't know have reached out to me. People I don't know have made phone calls. Everybody has, I asked them, embrace my son as if he was yours because this could have been your child. Right. I never thought that would happen to me. I never thought that I would be looking for my 25-year-old mm. son, that he would be missing, mm -hmm. that I would find him in a river. Dead. But... It happened to me, it could happen to anybody. I'm not exempt. I wanted them to know they're not exempt. They could have been your son, your nephew, your brother, your cousin, your grandson. So I needed them to feel that because that's the only way I was gonna get help. And I think that what you said is right. People ask me all the time about covering crime and why do you think that there are networks that do, you know, huge ratings with people watching shows like my show, Deadline Crime. And I said, listen, it's not because I think people enjoy it. I actually think they know, but for the grace of God, there go I, that it can happen to you, that you can be walking in the parking lot and something happens, that there are evil people out there. 
So what you were asking for in that coverage was nothing different than any person in this entire audience, any person watching. And by the way, any of the reporters and anchors covering it. Because I know what that feels like. My sister's death is unsolved. And they would want the same coverage. What do you think the media has to do now that you've had this experience and you've been behind the scenes? What do we have to do to get this right so that we're right by people like you and anyone else? I, as, as I've said before, they need, they need not to look at the color. Everybody, this, these are humans. We all have feelings. We all have loved ones that we love. So you don't just look at it because of the race and because that's how I feel that they were looking at it. It was this young white girl, this blonde eyed, blue eyed girl, a black male missing it because the police even said it to me. Is he depressed or do you just think he just didn't want to be with, around his family or do you think that he was just trying to get away from something? He was in something bad? No. He wasn't a blogger. He was going to school to be a doctor. He had a family that loved him. Why look for the worst when just look for Jelani?